Hi everyone, welcome to our day two coverage of DSCI 2023. Today we are focusing on unmanned systems, starting with the Royal Navy booth, who is showcasing a number of unmanned aircraft and unmanned submarines. First, let's focus on the unmanned air systems on display on the booth. With me is a lieutenant of the Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm. Lieutenant, good, good afternoon. Can you please introduce yourself? Hello, yes, yeah, so I'm Lieutenant Christian Lilly. Um, I'm the Deputy Flight Commander of the Banshee Flight at 700 X-ray and also the Trials Management Officer. All right, very well. So, Banshees by uh, Kinetic typically are used as uh, target drones. Uh, they are painted uh, yellow or orange or bright colors. Uh, behind you is a Banshee, but it's not painted in such a color. Uh, can you tell us uh, what you're currently doing with those, uh, those uh, UASs? Yeah, sure. So Banshee for us is actually going to be used as a pathfinder um, and that's predominantly to build experience in the Royal Navy to operate fixed wing fast jet drones. So coming from a background where we used to hand launch Pumas, which are quite light, they go about 20 knots. So it's something where we've got uh, jet aviation fuel in with engines that can go over 360 knots. It's important for us to operate it safely and learn how to do that. And that's what this is all about as a Pathfinder. Wow. How, how many uh, systems do you have? We have eight air systems currently um, and we have two launches to go with that. In the recent past, uh, the Royal Navy conducted some uh, a test from an aircraft carrier with the Banshee. Uh, yeah, previously, uh, they've had launched from an aircraft carrier, but that was with Kinetic. Uh, we're now standing in front of a very different uh, UAS. What is this one? Yeah, so as you can see, it's, it's an octicopter. Um, it's called the Malloy. Malloy is a British company that manufacture basically drones that can lift um, a lot of weight. So they come in numerics after each model. This is a T-150, which means it can lift 150 pounds. Uh, they also have other models where they can lift different payloads. Um, good for logistics, uh, and as you can imagine, with different payloads you can put on them, different utilities as well with that. So uh, down the road, are you looking at uh, deploying these from, uh, for example, the uh, fleet support ships uh, to assist with the underway uh, replenishment at sea operations? Yeah, I can imagine that would be the way forward. That We did do a trial out of Pradanic where we launched one of these to the Queen Elizabeth. Um, it was using a T-400. Uh, so we, we took a package and, and we brought it over to the ship. Um, and so we did that experiment already. Yeah, but I can imagine that's something what the future looks like. And, and now that you mention it, uh, of course, uh, the Royal Navy and maybe uh, your unit made headlines uh, last week with the, the, the first ever uh, launch and recovery of an unmanned uh, fixed wing aircraft uh, from uh, Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, that's great. That's, that was the wind racer that, that did that as part of them. They were in the heavy lift challenge a couple of years ago. Um, and so they were the first to do it. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm now with the Lieutenant Commander of the Royal Navy Submarine Service to discuss unmanned submarines. So we are standing in front of uh, a model of uh, CETUS. I believe that's a project for an XL UUV. Can you tell us more? Yeah, so Project Cetus is a project to deliver an extra large uh, uncrewed underwater vehicle for the Royal Navy to start to demonstrate and understand how we can employ autonomous systems such as this in support of our operations around the globe. Uh, why is it so important for the Royal Navy to uh, study unmanned platforms, especially in the submarine domain? So, to be able to meet future threat. What we need to be able to do is, is deploy our systems into the ocean uh, and operate uh, in a variety of different ways uh, to provide the flexibility and agility to, to meet the modern threat. That's what CETUS is all about. It's about understanding the underwater battle space uh, and being able to operate in such a way that we take humans out of the battle space itself um, so take them out of danger and put the robotic systems in harm's way but it also provides us a way of delivering uh, a system of systems approach so by having a, a payload bay that we can fit out for different reasons we can make the system operate to protect infrastructure we can make it uh, be able to do intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance and we can use it to assist in anti-submarine warfare uh, and, and as we develop more understanding we'll be able to develop more payloads and therefore expand the operational profile and also the operational envelope making use of the, 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 a wider part of the sea being able to go deeper than our crude assets already go. 
uh, well, which company is uh, the main, uh, the prime contractor for the, the, the project and uh, can you share with us some of the performance figures uh, yeah. or specification of the, the submarine? Uh, a company called MSubs, who are uh, a small niche um, uh, agile provider, uh, won a competition. Uh, this was competed, uh, they won it, uh, and they are uh, you know, building this down in uh, the southwest in the, in, in the UK. So this is, this is being built within uh, the UK. Uh, what can you share with us the, the length and the approximate uh, displacement? Yeah, so this is a, um, uh, a scale model. The, the final one will be around 40 feet long, uh, weigh around 25 tons. Um, and the payload space will be around eight cubic meters, which gives us a lot of flexibility uh, to be able to put a lot of different bits of equipment in there and deliver a lot of different capabilities. And last but not least, what's the current status of the project? So the, the, the project is in build at the moment. So MSubs are currently building the, the real one and we expect to have the real one hopefully in the water early 2025. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. We are now with a Swedish Swiss company UMS Skeldar who's showcasing its V200 UAS and for the first time they're showcasing it with some sono buoys. Uh, what can you tell us about this uh, uh, new capability for your uh, UAS? I believe you are partnering with uh, Ultra of uh, Canada? Yes, that is correct. So uh, this is a brand new capability that we're showcasing at this event uh, this year. And it brings a existing technology for the for the manned helicopters, uh, but for the first time it is now mounted on the unmanned helicopter, and this gives us a unique capability to be the uh, very fast in the deployment with a very low footprint, operating from a small ship or uh, or similar, and we can be the the first officer uh, on the line, uh, giving the information, for example, for the telecalibration of the sonar boys. Um, very fast back to a uh, manned NH-90 or a Seahawk uh, or a similar. So when they come out with bigger sonar boys and more sonar boys, they will be ready to deploy um, instantly. This means that the, the, the area for the submarine uh, is, is, not, is, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger for each minute. And so time is very essential when you're working with anti-submarine warfare. And the scalar will be uh, used to cut that time. Are you uh, developing this uh, capability uh, with a specific customer in mind? Uh, we have a, a, a lot of interest of this capability and we're working, as you said, in a cooperation with, uh, with Ultra that has a contract with the Canadian MOD uh, to get this first prototype out on the market. And uh, currently I cannot, of course, disclose uh, who we're working with, but we have a huge interest, uh, certainly within Europe. Uh, last but not least, uh, the V200 uh, has currently uh, two Navy customers, uh, namely the German Navy and the Belgian Navy. Uh, can you tell us about the status with, uh, of the, the program with each Navy? Yeah, the German Navy we began uh, delivering for uh, two years ago and it has been operational uh, since then. They are uh, embarking the Skeldar on board on the K130 uh, Corvettes. And it's, uh, uh, we have now taken the second contract for a year ago, or two years ago, where we are delivering um, uh, another batch uh, for the Corvettes. That is uh, an upgraded version, so to speak, from the first uh, program that can be considered as a test program. Uh, the other customer you're referring to is the Belgium and the Netherlands um, uh, consortium for the MCM uh, program. Uh, we are currently working um, uh, with the verification and the flight testing internally and we are ready to be delivering to our um, uh, partner the, um, uh, the Prime for the toolbox which is Excel in, uh, in France and Belgium and the delivery to the end customer will be uh, during the next year. Very well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, hope you a good day. We are now over at the Thales booth, who is showcasing for the first time a Jekyll hybrid VTOL UAV fitted with a number of uh, LMM. James, uh, can you tell us uh, what you're trying to demonstrate with this uh, model? Yes, 
we're really showcasing a uh, unique capability that we have introduced by combining the unique features of the LMM multi-role missile with an innovative platform like, like we have with Jackal, where the characteristics of LMM been able to address the counter FIAC threat and also the counter UAV threat that is combined by providing this capability that could operate from small ships as well as corvettes and frigates like traditional helicopters and we believe that is a unique and very valuable proposition in today's climate. The LMM has been uh, proven already in, a, in the naval domain. Can you remind our audience uh, how and when? Yes, absolutely. The LMM has entered service in the naval domain on the Wildcat helicopter, so it is already air proven as part of its multi role capabilities. But there has been, as a recent example, there has been a really superb trial called Triton's Arrow, performed by 815 and 825 Naval Air Squadron, where they have fired a 12 missiles to really extend the capability of the LMM missile and the Wildcat against a range of threats from small, highly maneuverable targets to fast interceptor uh, boats and also uniquely the first helicopter air-to-air -air firing that has been performed in the UK and that was all done with our multi-role missile and the Navy are extremely impressed with the capability that we showed. Very well James, thank you very much. Okay, it's a pleasure, thank you.